Hi guys and welcome to Bite Size Excel. Over the next few videos, we're going to take a look at different ways to split a value out over days and months. So in today's example, we have a monthly tracker which has the project, a start date and end date within the month of January 21 and a value for that project. And what we want our table to do is we wanted to split out that value over the dates, including the start date and the end date. So in this example where it's already completed, we've got it split out between the 4th, which is the start date, and the 20th, which is the end date. And this is the formula that we're using to do it. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to break this down into its component parts. So we'll start by just zooming in. And we'll add in a few additional columns, just so you can see what I'm doing. So this first column will be the number of days, and that'll be the number of days between the start and the end date. Then this column will be the value per day. And we'll just wrap those so you can see them properly. So to get our number of days, we're going to take the start date away from the end date, so end date minus start date actually going to lock these to the cell. So I'll lock them just to the column because I want to be able to drag it down through all the different rows. And we're going to need to add one onto that to make it inclusive of the start and the end date. And we'll just format that as a number. And as you can see, 17 days between the 4th and the 20th. If I were to change this to the 5th, that will be two days and you can see that it's changed and also that the values over here have updated. Next we're going to look at the value per day and that's nice and easy. That's our value and again we're going to lock that to the column. I'm using the shortcut F4 and we're going to divide it by the number of days. And you see because there's two days it's five gram per day. If I were to change this to the seventh so that there were four days it drops down and again these values over here have updated. Now the next thing we want to know is whether the date we're looking at falls within this date range. Now the easiest way to check this is probably to look at whether this date is less than the start date or greater than the end date. Now you'll notice here that this is actually formatted as a date so this entire row here is formatted as a date. It's just a custom format that shows it simply as day day. So to check whether this date is less than the start date, we do equals our date. We'll lock that to our row. And we want to check is it less than our start date. I'm going to lock that to the column. And you get a true because the 1st of January is less than the 4th of January. We we're going to drag this across. You'll see that you get a false value when you get to the 4th. So the fourth is equal to our start date and then everything after that is greater than our start date. Doing the same thing and checking our end date. Go equals our date. Again lock it to our row. And this time we want to know whether it's greater than our end date. Locking that to the column. And you see you get a false because it's not at the moment until you drag it over and you'd expect a true value when you get to the eighth. So what you should notice here is that you're getting two falses for each of the values that are between your start and your end date, while you're getting one true and one false for everything else. So what you want to test is whether you're getting at least one true. So to do this, we'll use our OR function. So equals OR. And when you're using OR where there's values that are true or false, you can simply just click on those values and it will give you a true if one of them is true and a false if all of them are false. So again, dragging this over, you'll see that you've got your false values where there are falses here. So I'm just going to copy this down and paste it as formulas and just turn these into numbers. So now we want to build up our formula from these component parts. So we end up with a final product like this. So I'm just going to take out the existing and we're going to build it up. 
So what we want to say is if our value, this value here is true, we want it to just return a zero because it's outside of our date range. And if it's false, we want it to return this day value. So using if, we go equals if. Our logical test is this true or false, so we'll just pop that in for now. Then if it's going to be true, we want it to be a zero because it's outside of our date range. And if it's false, we want it to be this value per day. And that will essentially give us the basis to then build up our formula. So starting out replace with replacing this G1. So we're going to put in our OR function. So that's now testing if this or this is true. We're going to replace those individual components. So the first part is testing whether our date is less than our start date. And the second section here is checking whether our date is greater than our end date. And that's our logical test completed. We don't have to do anything with this value of true parameter because we do want to return a zero if it's true. We're going to update this day part of the formula. So we'll replace that. And then we're going to replace this last bit with this formula to calculate the number of days. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside some brackets just to make sure it's all calculating correctly. And then when we hit enter, you'll find that your formula is now only referring to these cells here and is no longer reliant on these individual components. So if we were to copy this, we could paste it across, pick the way to the end. And you'll note that now those values go back in as you were expecting. And equally, we can copy it down. And you'll see that it does it for each of the individual rows. You can take out these additional columns now, so you may want to leave them in. But for us, we're going to take them out, we'll zoom back out a bit so you can see the entire sheet. And now when you change any of these start dates or end dates, your values will automatically update. So this has been an introductory example as to how you can use functions such as if and or to split out values based on a start and an end date. If you've got any particular questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please do let me know in a comment. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe and I do hope to see you in a future video.